right, guys. Welcome back to the Freedom House podcast. Whoa, whoa. We have our good friends, Gabby and Spencer Clapp, on the podcast today. Let's go. Come on, baby. Let's go. And so really our heart in this podcast is just to have a conversation, talk about, I guess, multiple different things as married couples, but also just friendship. All of us have walked through years of friendship together. Um, but I, I just want to start with the question first of like, hit us with it. <laughs> I hit you two with it to start. What does it look like for each one of you uh, to walk in vulnerability as singles before you guys were together, but then learning to walk in vulnerability inside of your relationship? I know it's a loaded question. Answer what you want. So let's get into it. <laughs> I knew he was going to hand off first. <laughs> Um, we were actually talking about this. It's kind of funny. We were chatting about this a while ago. We're both going through Continuous Revival, the book by Norman Grove, the small one. And um, he talks about two-way brokenness. So like brokenness between you and the Lord and then brokenness between you and other people. Um, and how that's like, like the state that we can live in continuous revival and just being alive is like, okay, how do I stay broken for the Lord and then broken and contrite before people? And I feel like vulnerability is the same. Um, for me and my personal walk, learning how to be vulnerable with the Lord allowed me to learn how to be vulnerable with people and cultivate that. Um, and so I'd say for people that like are struggling or maybe they're like, I don't actually really know how to do vulnerability. Like if I'm being honest with myself, I don't know that I know how to do vulnerability well with people. I would say like the starting point for me was really pressing in and cultivating that with the Lord practical, like, Hey, something bad happens. And at least, at least from my like disposition, it was so easy to be like, it's okay, Lord, you're good. And like, you want to stir yourself up and you want to get out of it. And yeah. you're not letting that disappointment or the anger or the frustration pass through. So we're not coming to the Lord like, Hey, I actually am really hurting right now. And I don't like that I'm hurting. And this is new for me, but like, could you show me what the root of this is? Mm -hmm. And I think that growing in vulnerability and maturing, and that looks like asking real questions where you can actually get a real response. Yeah. And so I guess cultivating that also in marriage too, literally even just like on the way here on the car, <laughs> <laughs> Love Love we always be getting in stuff in the car on the way to just, it's beautiful though, because even looking back, we've been married just over a year, how we walk through vulnerability now versus even a year or when we were dating, it's so different because we chosen to cultivate that with each other. Like, Hey, if we're feeling disunity, being honest, and even if it's like, Hey, we're on a date and you just want to be like, suppress it. We're on a date. Let's have fun. Like, let's just, and sometimes you have to be like, Hey, not a big deal, but I felt hurt when like you said this, like this, and there can be a moment of brokenness between the Lord where you're like, okay, Lord, I'm hurt right now. Why am I hurt? And then coming to your friend or your spouse and being like, actually like did not feel like that was in love or I took offense was this your heart? And it can be such a quick moment of repentance and reconciliation. And I feel like that's been super fruitful for us in our friendship and our marriage and just in our relationship and yeah. also with friends too. Yeah. It's just been awesome. Yeah. I think when you look at the two greatest commandments, you have love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then Jesus says the second, love your neighbor as yourself. And I feel like <clears throat> cultivating that vulnerability with God, if you don't have that vulnerability with God, you're not going to actually be able to love him fully. Yeah. And then that transitions right into your neighbor. If you don't have vulnerability with him, then you're not going to be able to fully love them. And I feel like looking at my own life of living for so long, hiding everything and not being vulnerable. And in the past four years of learning what that looks like and still learning what that looks like, <laughs> But of, if my utmost value is the presence and connection with God and then connection with brothers and sisters, then there has to be vulnerability. Mm -hmm. and if there's not vulnerability, then there's no connection. Because yeah. stuff comes up all the time, whether it's sin or 
offense or frustration or lies that come. And if you don't deal with that, then the connection's fractured. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like having that as the greatest value, it just, it's either going to be life or death. You're either going to have fullness or you're not. Um, <clears throat> you have something? I was going to ask go. them another question. Do you want to say something? No, you go. Well, I was just going to ask, like, what were practical ways? You kind of both touched on it, but, like, what were practical ways? I know, Spencer, your story. I don't know if you want to share a little bit of it, but practical ways that you both or maybe even just Spencer, like, came out of hiding in that because I feel like it's really easy with even friendships and relationships in your, like, dating, I would say, um, even in marriage as well, but, like, you can really hide easily. And I think marriage exposes it where you can't hide anymore. Um, no, but you can't yeah. hide. You, you can't be hiding anymore, yeah. <laughs> but I think even, I think specifically in both y'all's lives in singleness, because we knew you guys both when you were single, when you were dating, engaged, now married, you both in your own ways came out of hiding. Um, so what were ways that I guess I, both of you as well, like, how did you guys come out of hiding practically? You got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I, as I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I doing? But then just like the journey of taking that one step, whether it's just like one thing. Um, but practically it looked like people around me. That's what brought me out of hiding. Like if I look at Austin and I'm like, if he did not come in my life, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And if he hasn't walked with me like he has, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And then I look at Gabby in marriage and I'm like, if she hasn't loved me and given me tough love and corrected me or challenged me in things, I wouldn't be where I'm at either. And so it really takes the people around us calling us higher into our destinies and the fullness. And I would say that practically having brothers and sisters around you is one of the biggest things. Speaking of that too, um, Thinking about like that word vulnerability, there's not, I believe, a practical way to be vulnerable with every single person that you know. And I don't even believe like spiritually that is always, when I say safe, I don't mean like safe for the person, but I mean, I think safe in a healthy way mm -hmm. of who am I inviting into maybe a really weak moment that I'm inviting their words, I'm inviting their discernment, I'm inviting their friendship in a moment. And so practically actually did this like in singleness, redid it in an engagement. And then in marriage, I remember walking through it is having time with the Lord and being like, who are, who are my three? Like, who are the people that you are inviting into my life and me into their life where we can actually cultivate a culture of unity, vulnerability, that's safe for me. So when I am struggling with something, I am having a hard day. You guys both practically have been some of those friends for us. So it's been cool to like know that there are some moments that you're not going to go to someone on the outside, outside, outside of your friend group to be vulnerable with. It's, And I think that's kind of alleviating because I think sometimes with culture, Christian culture, we're like, oh, we just want to be real. We want to be real. And for some people, they, I feel like the challenge is, well, I want to be honest, but I don't know how to be vulnerable. And that might look like asking the Lord, like, hey, start bringing me the few that I can really lean on. Like, I can look in our life and we have people in our inner circle that we go to that are safe, meaning, hey, I'm, I feel safe here, but also I know that they're not just going to tell me what I want to hear. They're not, it's safe as in like, I actually don't want an echo chamber around me. I want different express expressions of the Lord to call me higher, to be like, hey, could you check this blind spot? Like I'm really struggling and I want to know that the people in my life are safe as in they're going to be like, hey, God, I love you enough to be like, I actually don't think this is your heart, but this is how you came off. Yeah. Um, I remember a, just a specific instance, actually the Lord brought this back to mind this week when we kind of were praying about today. And I had a friend, we're in community together and he had an authority as a brother to speak into my life. And I remember, um, having a really, like probably the first vulnerable, hard conversation on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. And he sat me down and there was an, an area in my life that I had a huge blind spot in mm -hmm. that. No, I, I literally, I mean, it's a blind spot. Cause like we don't see it. Yeah. And it took someone that 
that cared for me as a friend that was close enough to me where I could like receive that with loving correction. Wow. And, yeah. um, he was like, Hey, I don't think this is your heart, but when you speak like this, this is how you affect people. Mm. And it was really hard because it took me, it took the honesty that in my own heart to look at my own life and be like, Hey, um, is this actually fruit that is of the Lord or is it not? And so I think just having people that can do that and do that well, and Absolutely. that you're open to meeting them there. Yeah. Um, it was like something that was really awesome. That's so good. I think something that's not talked about a lot is, you know, I think we can have this conversation living in the fruit of where we've seen the beauty and vulnerability, but the side that it's not talked about is, there's a lot of people, and I think part of my story is like trying to be vulnerable, but when you do, people run. Where it's like your natural tendency is wanting people in close connection with you, but when you share the hard parts of your life, if it's not the right person and the person that God's called you to and someone who's mature enough to receive it and also love you well in it, their natural tendency is to run because you're bringing them into the hard stuff. Or they're seeing the hard stuff and they're like, I don't want anything to do with that. Because at the end of the day, like we're all messy in, in some sort. Um, and I think the beauty for me in vulnerability has been when sharing from a deep vulnerable place, the people that God's brought in my life that have loved me, seen me, and stayed when it got hard has shown me the fruit of why we're vulnerable, yeah. of like, Man, it, it, the scriptures talk about like, hey, share your sins therefore with one another. It's in James. Mm -hmm. Therefore with one another so that you may be healed. Yeah. That scripture only comes to life if people who you're sharing with are also walking with willing. the Holy Spirit. You have to be willing, yeah. but you also have to be people who are walking with the Lord. Yeah. You know, vulnerability isn't just, just sharing. It's also the partaking of sharing of whoever you're sharing with. That person is like yeah. loving you in your mess. And it, it breaks something in you. When vulnerability is actually done from a right place, it breaks the fear. It breaks the, um, yeah, the fear of actually being seen yeah. fully. And when you do, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this was possible. Yeah. I didn't even know that people could love me in my mess. And I think for me, yeah. that's shown me the grace of Jesus. Especially like, you know, big part of my story is not growing up in the church. So like, I didn't have the, step ladder of like, this is what grace means. People coming in my life who genuinely loved me showed me what grace looked like when in my mess, when I tried to hide it all and it got exposed, the people that stayed and loved me in it changed everything. Yes. Literally, you know, I feel like in that at the same time, it brings so much liberty to the person who's sharing his heart, but the person you're actually sharing with, I remember so many times Austin and I, just pouring my heart out to him where I'm at, no matter how ugly or broken it was, but then how much that brings us into deeper unity and deeper friendship and deeper fellowship. And that has been one of the most beautiful things to experience of like, I get to share my mess and what's going on in my heart. And at the same time I'm getting free and then we're getting closer. And I feel like that is a beautiful part of how God writes the story and brings us and knits us together. I think the beauty of it too is it, it at first, when you first start being vulnerable, it feels like the most overwhelming, uncomfortable thing to ever do. But then when you start to do it in like rightly, it feels so much more easy over time where it no longer has to be this drawn out, long hour and a half conversation. Sometimes it's like that where it's like, man, this is what I'm going through. But sometimes it's just like, bro, this literally happened to me in Spence the other day he called me. He said, bro, had this thought, believing a lie about myself. I said, bro, I rebuke that. Let's pray right now. We pray and we get off the phone. Literally move on. <laughs> we move on. But like we were living under the power of what the enemy has spoken to us and the lie that we believed. But you bring community into it and vulnerability. And Jesus comes with this, with this power. We're reminded that the Holy Spirit yeah. lives in us. And all of a sudden we're like, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm actually okay. Yeah. You know, that's what I love about two way brokenness is being vulnerable with God and being broken before Him, and then vulnerable and broken before brother or sister. And then how it's fully liberating and restoring to the Lord in connection with Him. 
and then with each other. And I, it's just so crucial. We need it. Yeah. And I, knowing it's for people that have never done this before and looking back at when we started being vulnerable and open, how hard it is, but literally just taking a step, even if it's the smallest thing, because obviously the devil wants us to keep quiet yeah. and doesn't want us to share. Yes. And as literally as soon as you do, it's fully done. I have a question. I wanted to ask from like diagonals across the tables because something that we talk about a ton in our marriage is me and Gabby are super alike and Spencer and Jules are super alike inside of the way that we process. And it's honestly been amazing for our friendship because it's helped us understand from a girl end and from a guy end. And it's been a blessing. Um, But I guess for Spencer and Jules to start, like what has it been like for people who are naturally more on the quiet end have struggled more to open up in the sense of just speaking because like me and Gabby are naturally just going to tell people like everything that we're feeling because we verbally process, Mm -hmm. you know, like what has it been like for that? What were the lies that you guys believed like before you started to be vulnerable? And then what has been the truth that the Lord's shown you throughout being vulnerable? It's a great question. Um, I think for me, like the first part of the question of like, what was it like? I think before I, I was so afraid that people were going to run. Like I was so afraid that when I opened up my heart and gave them even a glimpse and it was messy because all of our hearts before I'd say, I say before the cross, before Jesus and before community, like (laughs) your, your heart is just so messy and I felt like when I was walking in that and just honestly walking very bound, I was so fearful to share that like little glimpse of my heart and expose that little bit because I felt like the second that something messy in my life was going to come or something messy in my life was going to be exposed and spoken out, like people would be like, oh, she's not as great as a Christian as I thought she was. Like I was believing the lie that like I wasn't worthy. Um, And of course, it's like literally the exact opposite with the community that we're in and the people that we're surrounded by. Like I shared something and people were like, tell me more. Like, I love you more. And like, it's the, I guess the picture of like the more that I let people into my heart, the more that they were able to get closer to me. Like they were, as I release things, there was more room for people to come closer. And like, I... Yeah, I think I was just I was believing a lot of lies, but I te- I tended to be the quiet, unproblematic person in the room, and so I didn't want to bring the problem. Like I didn't want to bring the 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 messy. Like I didn't want to be the messy because I'd seen like the louds and the messies and stuff, and I was like, or not even messy, just the loud, and I was like, Bleh. um, that wasn't like attractive to me. And then of course I married the loudest loud. man in the room. <laughs> 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 it became attractive. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah. And then what was the second part of the question? Like, what are the truths that you've seen through like the Lord coming and combating the lies that you believe of? Like you said, you didn't want to be messy, um, or you don't want to be the, you know, the loud in the group or the vulnerable one, but then God came in and he showed you the, I think at the end of the, yeah, I think I kind of already answered. I think at the end of the day, we're all messy. Like, I think that's just the reality. Like before God comes in and covers something, before the blood covers and we allow the blood to cover what's in our hearts, like at the end of the day, like we're a product of the fall. Like our hearts are a product of the fall. So we're messy, we're broken. We're That's why we need Jesus. Like yeah. that's why Jesus had to come is because we're, we're sinners. Like we were sinners before the cross. And so like we need saving. And I think the messy was so scary, the so exposing but with as soon like it literally the scripture that talks about like bringing it into the light confess your sins to one another like and you may be healed like legit the second I tell Gabby something the second I tell you Spence like anyone something and it's in that light darkness gone the blood covers it and we walk closer in community together and my heart's actually light like freedom I think the simple answer to that is what changed it's I was bound and now I'm free yeah yeah like I actually am free. I actually like the practicals of it. I'm lighter. I don't walk in heaviness. I make a mistake. We like have 
issues yeah. in marriage. Like we struggle with things. We poke and prod at each other's flesh and we get to walk in freedom and have discussions and conversations and beauty and in love and in truth. Yeah. And like, it's the best thing ever, yeah. like simply. Yeah. So. yeah. I love that because through all of everything we walk through, it's just an opportunity to become more like Jesus. Yeah. It's an opportunity for us to crucify the flesh and then have an area of our life healed, restored, and look completely like Jesus. Because yeah. I love the scripture in 2 Corinthians 3.18 of as we behold, we become. Yeah. And as we're beholding him, areas in our life are being shown on that don't look like Jesus. Yeah. And then we have the opportunity in that moment to repent, to release, to be vulnerable, and then actually have that area, that mess, be transformed into glory and to look like Jesus. Now, looking at my life of walking through rejection, fear of man and opinion of man, the three biggest things I've had to walk through. And still to this day, my mind's being renewed, but I've been liberated from it. But in that, it kept me quiet because I felt like nobody else cared. I felt like I was unseen yeah. and I was unloved. Yeah. And then in that as well, I felt like just nobody wanted to hear from me. Nobody really cared. And then I was also afraid of what people would think. So I, ke- I just kept quiet. It's like, nobody cares. And I really don't want people to know because then they're going to look down on me and be like, oh, you struggled with that. And it really started just breaking open. Um, when I first had that encounter with the Lord four years ago, but then fast forwarding to Africa and then just feel like the floodgates unleashed yeah. and God just poured his healing out yes. and deliverance through my soul Mm -hmm. and that that being vulnerable in that area that has transformed my whole life and it's actually been able to walk out the second Corinthians 13 beholding into becoming because of vulnerability and transparency and like okay god i see this in my life i want to repent and i want to i want you to cover me with your blood and then when i do it's literally removed as far as from the east is west and you're making me like your son (laughs) Yeah. It's just now it's such a joyful place. At first it was so hard and it was a struggle, but every time I kept reaching out and being vulnerable with the Lord and being vulnerable with people, it's like more just kept getting broken off me of like, this is actually joyful, like joyful repentance. Yeah. And like this, I get to do this. And then it's just going to bring me closer and make me look more like you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's so simple. Yes. So now whenever something happens, I'm like, we're dealing with this right now in the moment. And then I want full restoration and then full restoration. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how we're meant to live. (laughs) You know? Cool. I'll speak to that really quick. Just like, awesome. Well, you touched on it earlier, but as you continue to cultivate vulnerability, unity in your life with the Lord and your life with people, things that used to take long drawn out three hour conversation, all the tears, all of this, like as we cultivate those pathways in our heart of, Oh, feeling off, this is the lie. Okay. This is what I know is true. And being able to walk that out and cultivate walking that out and choosing that over and over. It's like things that communication issues that we used to, the heaviness would sit on us for hours, days. Like you'd be in a funk for weeks. Like seriously, now it's like, We can have a moment and we can go there. We can be real. We can be honest. The yeah. first step to vulnerability really is like that. Like you have to be honest with yourself where you're at. Yeah. Not like, I think for me, my tendency is stir yourself up. It's okay. Like it's a lie. Just grab hold of it. And yeah. I had to realize I have to be okay that I'm not okay. And then I need to bring that to the Lord and be honest with him. And then I can be vulnerable with my friend, with my husband, and it can be like a three minute thing. And it's almost so challenging for my mind to be like, okay, was that it? Right. Like, am I, should I be staying in my like prayer closet for another like 30 minutes and like get some tears out to feel like that like moment was real? Or can I actually, as Spencer said, like walk in joyful obedience, walk in joyful repentance and have joyful surrender yes. and then walk in joy, like not carry the heaviness. And so I think that's been really cool just to look back on one year, two year, three years ago, the, the progress of cultivating vulnerability and how quickly we actually can access freedom through vulnerability when we practice it consciously in our life. Yeah. 
I think of just as like a quick testimony us this summer when I was so I was pregnant in Africa so we'll that's a whole thing but <laughs> I literally <laughs> there was one I always remember this anytime we talk about like vulnerability and like to put a name on it, like conflict resolution, like especially inside of our marriage. But I think it's a representation for friendship as well. I don't even remember what came up, but I was watching volleyball probably like six months pregnant at this point. I'm or seven months. Like I'm slowing down, like can't be out on the court as much. And Austin did, I finally like got on to the court was playing and Austin did something that just like, gosh, it grinded my gears. I was like, I'm not surprised. I, <laughs> I was so annoyed and I'm like, we're playing a couple points and I'm like, I just have to talk like just with our marriage. Like what we've realized is like, if we're in the moment, I will literally, the way I operate is I will sit in that heaviness. Like I'm right there with you. Like I will sit in that heaviness until we have a conversation. So I was like, no, we're dealing with this right now. We have like 40 people around us. Like, yeah, I mean, this is like high of the thing, game. Austin probably like just got a spike. Like he is pumped. <laughs> We like hit, it literally is like game over and I'm making a beeline to you. Like I'm like beeline, like we're dealing with this. Like I'm so just, I can't, I like, I've gotten to the place. I think what you're talking about, like I don't want to sit in it longer than I have to. Like I don't want to sit in the way that I'm feeling for longer than I have to. So I literally put myself between Austin. It was like Austin, me, the net and like the 40 other people behind us. And I'm just like, this made me mad that you did this. I love you. I know that's not your heart, but I'm frustrated with you right now. And like we hashed it out. I think it was a total of 45 seconds of him being like, this is what I meant to, this is what I was doing in that. But, but you know, we go back and forth, like heart check, heart check. And well, I mean, I'm not kidding. Like freedom delivered, whatever in 45 seconds. And like, we're moving on. And of course that's something that like going back to it, you have to cultivate. Like, I mean that where we started our first summer in Africa dating was three to four hour long conversations of me just sobbing and Austin, like, you know, tending to my heart, me tending to his heart, like That's going rough. back and forth. It was hard. It was rough. Okay. The three to four went to an hour. That's not everyone's story, but it was ours where now we can just be like, okay, we're off. We like, we're not in unity, whatever you want to say. And now we can just have conversations quickly deal with them. And some of them are, Hey, let's talk about this later, depending on the situation we're in. But I just feel like there's like, it's fruit from, yes, it's hard. You have to cultivate it. You have to tend to that relationship, relationships, marriage, spouse, whatever. Mm -hmm. But over time, it actually allows you to just walk in the fruit of that and yeah. walk in the freedom of it and be like, Hey, we're good. Like, yeah, we're good. let's talk. We're not good. We're not good. Okay. Now we're good. Like oh, what yeah. you're saying, like we're good. On the topic of vulnerability, and there's a direct correlation to humility because we can't be vulnerable if we're actually not humble. Yeah. And James chapter four, verse six, it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So when we actually humble ourselves, to the Lord and to each other, that actually gives us the opportunity to receive grace, yeah. mm -hmm. to actually be washed and cleansed from it, and then to receive power to walk free from it. Mm -hmm. And so like on the topic, if people are struggling with specific things, I remember when I used to struggle with specific things, um, say sexual morality yeah. and porn and masturbation, if there's not a vulnerability and humility to actually bear this before the Lord and bear it before people, then I'm actually not going to, receive grace yeah. to walk free because yes. yes. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I think I honestly think that's one of the like big, that is the biggest hindrance to vulnerability is pride. Yeah. Like all of us, even what you were sh sharing of like, I was afraid. Yeah. False humility or pride. It's all yes. the same thing. <laughs> like that fear of, you know, if I share this, I'll be looked at differently. Or what will people think of me? And it's all a me focused thing, yes. which at the end of the day, that's just pride. Yeah. <laughs> like when you focus more on what people will think of you and not come under the like identity of what God says you are, mm -hmm. it's pride. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's probably been the biggest hindrance for me of like, yes. will this affect the narrative that I've tried to build for myself of what people see me as? Yeah which is just so dumb. Yeah. It's so dumb. Like literally, you know? are we over our reputations? Yeah. <laughs> are we over what people think about us? Yeah. yeah. Because if we are actually fully submitted to the spirit, 
we have been made alive in him and we're dead to our old ways and our old nature. And we actually have a new nature. Like, are we <laughs> actually willing to be walk out the reality that's been purchased for us? Yes. Wow. Literally, the Bible says we've been bought with a price. You are no longer your own. Yes. We literally have a master, and his name's Jesus. <laughs> we are slaves to him, bond servants to him. Yes. yes, we're friends of God. We're beloved. We're the bride of Christ, but you're actually not your own. <laughs> and when we get that revelation of Okay, my life is actually not my own. I'm going to reckon myself dead and give myself over to Jesus. And then at that point, that breaks pride, fear of man, opinion of man, and you're actually like, my, I'm not my own. So this doesn't actually even matter. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get over ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get me going. <laughs> well, he used to be afraid to talk. Now he preaches. <laughs> Um, I think on the topic of honestly, both of what you guys are saying, but also in the context of what you were talking about of building your own narrative, but even on the flip side of your question that you asked Spence and I of, hey, we were maybe the quieter, more low key on the low key side where you and Gab, I think where you guys relate a lot is you're definitely the more vocal ones um, or even like before marriage before Christ, but even now, like the way that the Lord's created you guys, you guys have a voice and the Lord's given you a voice. But I think when it's outside of Christ and it's outside of what you're talking about, the humility, mm. I think it can very easily where you would say, oh, it's easy for Jules and Spence to hide or the quieter ones to hide. I actually would contradict that and say, I think it could potentially even be easier for the loud or the extroverted to hide. Um, because of many different reasons, but I think you're, you can make your own narrative. You can be loud. You can be okay. You can go and show up to the church and the church setting or the body or your friend group. And you can be loud and put on a smile and kind of what you said, like muster yourself up to be like, Hey, I'm good. Um, where have you guys found the balance like in that of like, I know we've talked about this a lot, but it's really easy. Like when Austin and I get into an argument, I'm like, well, before, I guess I would be like down out. I'm processing. I like need a little bit to gather my thoughts where he can be like, all right, we park the car. He's out. And he's like, nothing ever happened. Um, where is like the balance in that? Do you guys think, but also what has the Lord shown you in the way he's made you, but also how it, it is, I would say easy to hide in that and behind that face if you're not careful. So yeah. I guess on the flip side. Yeah. I think, honestly, for me, the one of the biggest things has been the scripture where it talks about boasting in our weakness has been like one of the hardest things for me to do. I think because this is coming from like a personal place of living. I got saved and was immediately thrown into ministry in an amazing way. Like so thankful the Lord did that. But there was no time to cultivate like what people think of you when you're in a leadership position. You know, there's a natural tendency inside of our culture. When someone's in a leadership position, we've been built to, in a lot of ways, people see us and think that we're doing good. Yeah. Um, and I think I took that and tried to remain good when really inside of me, was a lot of darkness and a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. And that scripture where it talks about like, you know, unless the inside of the cup is clean, like nothing else is clean. Yeah. The outside can be shiny, but the inside's dark. The whole cup's yes. dark. Same, you know? Yes. And for me, that that was a big part of my story is desiring so badly to want to share in my weakness, but having no one to run to because I had built a culture of being okay, mm -hmm. that everyone came to me as though, man, this dude's doing good. And it was just a lie. At the end of the day, like for years it was a lie until the exposing started to come. Because at the end of the day, I mean, Jesus was with me in it throughout all of it. You know, throughout all of it, he was there and I knew he was there. But God did stuff pretty miraculously in my life where he started to expose stuff. And I say miraculously because if he didn't do that, I think I would still be in it. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm talking like sexual morality. I'm talking about, you know, talking to people I shouldn't be talking to, yeah. building a false narrative about who I am when really it's just a lie. And I think the balance was starting to learn that inside of ministry, inside of leadership, inside of just being wanting to look like Jesus, it's boasting in my weakness. Mm -hmm. It's letting people into the darker places. And there's a wisdom to it. It's a discernment on who you're bringing into everything. But boasting in my weakness so much so that people can see, man, my heart is not only wanting to be pure before God, like my heart is to be known by the Lord, He's to seek me and know me, that's my heart. But also in it is I'm not hiding from anybody. This stuff that I'm walking through, what's in my heart, out, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. <laughs> Inside of my heart was a lot of junk. So what I was portraying out of my mouth was a lot of junk. It might have sounded good, but it was junk. Yeah. It wasn't actually truth. But then I realized, man, if my heart posture is humility before the Lord, and I realize, man, I'm struggling. And so I'm coming to the Lord saying, Lord, I'm struggling. I need you. This is what's going on in me. God started to provoke me inside of leadership inside of moments of community, he would start to put the Holy Spirit, this little tugging of the Holy Spirit, Austin, you need to share what's going on. Yeah. And then when he did, I had my desire from that point, because I was being vulnerable before the Lord and being humble before the Lord, God started to provoke me. I started to share, freedom started to come. Yeah. It breaks the room. It breaks. The, it wasn't even for like it was for me. Like I was doing it because I knew God was calling me to do it for me. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, there's 20 other people in the room saying, "Dude, I'm in it. Yeah. <laughs> me too." I and I didn't. Do, the thing is, like, we didn't do it for that. But I realized in it as like, man, I want to forever live a life in weakness yeah. of like boasting in my weakness. God, you can have everything. I want people to know what I'm walking through because there's there's power in it. There's so much power in it. And I'm going to go through seasons where it's hard and stuff's happening. I'm getting attacked more than ever. I'm falling into stuff. But then there's going to be seasons where I'm walking in victory. And both seasons are just as crucial in how you yeah. walk. So I think the balance for me has been learning that being a man who has a heart for God, but if I just have a heart for the Lord without it actually coming from my mouth, that the desire of my heart being Jesus, I want to know you and that coming from my mouth, it really is nothing. I have to be, the balance has been, Lord, I know I want to know you. And from that place, man, I want to share with people what's going on in my life. Um, and so it's just been a journey. Like it's been this journey of like, man, Austin, you can't live in hiding anymore. So it's funny. You're saying the quietness you can live in hiding, but I think like you're saying on the other side, you can live in hiding just as much. You can just say a lot of words that sound really good and people, you can build a narrative for yourself. I think that's why throughout the scriptures, it talks about like, man, Jesus is going to come back one day and he's going to look at people and he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you mm -hmm. because you can build this narrative of what ministry looks like and what you look like as a man of God or a woman of God, but you can't have God in it. That's just religion. There's a possibility for us to do that. And I think for part of my walk with the Lord, it was like that. You know, I was seeking the Lord sometimes, but then majority of my life didn't have any bit of the Holy Spirit in it because I was, I was dormant. Yeah. My heart was rotten and yeah. dark. So I hope that answers your question. It's just more sharing. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I'll just share, as Austin was sharing, I was just kind of reflecting on even who I was three years ago and because my disposition naturally is the more outgoing, loud, likes to share, open, I realize that the opposite of vulnerability, at least for me, was striving. And striving was a huge stronghold for me because if I, if I wasn't good in here, but I knew I had to show up for church or be the leader or do this, it's like because of my, my personality, I could – honestly, not even knowingly disingenuinely portray a facade that I was doing. Okay. And it took me really getting to the end of myself and being like, am I actually okay? Not being the loudest person in the room. 
I'm okay not being the girl that has the answers. Am I okay if I rock up to a party and I talk to one person? Like, why am I seeking the applause of man? And so a lot of what I thought was my personality actually was just like stuff I needed to get freed from, to be honest. And um, it's beautiful the way that the Lord's like knit us together in marriage because I think the strengths and weaknesses in both of our marriages have drawn us up and into who we are so much. And so for me, that just looked like honestly laying down striving. And then from that place, like, I mean, I had solid, I mean, our last season of our marriage, like was very hidden. And so for me, like the Lord had to walk me in in hiding me in love. Like, Hey, I actually want to, not that, not that we can't go through pruning openly because we can, but for me in this last season, it was like, I mean, for both of us, but in my story in that it's like, Hey, are you okay? Not having anything to say? Because I was, I would get to the point where I would overshare to overcompensate and the Lord started really wrecking me for that and, and showing me like, you can't actually have relationship like this. And so that just looked like a lot of pruning, a lot of dying willingly, sometimes joyfully, sometimes reluctantly, if I'm being honest. Um, and now the sound, even that I hear myself or when I know the posture of my heart sharing, I'm like, wow, me three years ago would have shared from such a different place. Um, and so obviously you know, it's a walk, like we're still being sanctified, but I, I know that striving can also really be an, an enemy to vulnerability. And so if that's you just like asking the Lord, why, like, why am I striving for what approval, like, and allow him to take you on a journey of just laying that down and then walking in the opposite spirit. Um, and that's proven to just yield a lot of fruit, um, in my life and, and honestly in our marriage, um, to just give each other space to not be overbearing, to not overshare, to allow 30 seconds to pass while I let my husband process because we always joke that Spencer is like an instant or I'm like an instant pot and he's a crock pot. So like (laughs) someone can ask both of us a question and I'm like, Oh yeah, me, I'll go. And he's sitting here like his words are coming in there. So, and I'm just like, and so, and there's, there's like a lightness of like, Hey, you know what? When the Lord knit me together, like that's just a part of how he knit me, but also how can I be refined in that? Not in shame, but in openness of like, Hey Lord, I'm inviting you come cut away the limbs that need to die so I can actually flourish and so I can love my husband well and give him room and we are still growing (laughs) I'm an instapot now yeah (laughs) come on man (laughs) and I think the cool part is what I've learned in all of this over the years like you're saying three years ago I can't even recognize myself I can't recognize any of you honestly known you guys for that long and I look at you guys I'm like this doesn't make sense but in it is like you said 2 Corinthians 3 18 as we behold, we become like him. And in it is I think every person who's underneath the banner of Jesus, if you're saved and born again, I think we're called to live a quiet life of some sort of like, yeah, you can be a loud person naturally, but you're not supposed to be the center of attention always. You're never called to be that. It doesn't matter how you operate. Some of the greatest guys in the world who have led revivals, they're the most quiet people. They lived in the secret place. They've lived in quiet rooms. They understand the, the beauty and the need to be quiet. And I think it's cool, as I've seen with all of us, is like as we've grown in vulnerability with one another and being known and being seen by the Lord, but also by each other, I've seen all of us start to live more quiet lives of like, okay with saying no to the hangout because we know what we need. We need time with the Lord. When we wake up and we're like pissed off or frustrated, we know that we just need to get over Mm ourselves. It's like, I've seen this just like growing, not even just with us inside of this community here of people being okay as they are vulnerable and live in this, the fruit of vulnerability with the Lord and with each other, their lives get quieter and the body starts to be a body where everyone's okay with not, saying something because they just want the Lord to be first place. They want him to be the center. And I think, I think that's been one of the coolest fruits of all of this of I've seen a community live in vulnerability is people are just okay with being themselves. Yeah. It's amazing. It is. It really is amazing. It's the rest. Yeah. 
And it actually gives people space to be themselves. Yes. And I realize, like, I'll just say this for a second, but I've realized the power that we have when we, when you, just like you were sharing, when you walk in a room and you open the jar of your heart and you pour out, like, it actually invites. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability invites vulnerability. Like, it cultivates that inner room. It opens that. And so if we can be people that, when we walk in a room and we carry the presence of Jesus and we our hearts are just bursting with like his love and just whatever that looks like for that person in that moment, it opens and it invites. Yes. And that's the life we're called yeah. to beauty invites vulnerability invites. And so I just think that's also that's so super good. powerful. Oh yeah. You want to wrap us up? Practically question to wrap us up. What does it look like to live a life of vulnerability? Practically. I have some thoughts, but Give us the I want to hear from you guys first. <laughs> I feel like these are our practical. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Like, I love a practical. All of, Lord, all of it. And they're like, okay, step one. Yeah. How do we do Practically. <laughs> we have the opportunity to be vulnerable every second. Whenever something comes up. And there's so many distractions in this day and age. And we, I feel like most of the time we choose to numb ourselves. Yeah. We feel whatever is stirring inside of us come up. We feel conviction and then we run to the phone and we start scrolling. We start looking, we start comparing and it literally numbs us and grieves the Holy Spirit. Or we run, turn our show on, or just go talk to our friends instead of actually opening our heart up and sharing our heart. So I think practically in the moment when you feel stuff moving in you and you feel conviction about something, we have to be willing in that moment to take it to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do with this? And wait in here. Yeah. And be okay with that. Yeah. So I think practically taking it to the Lord right away, waiting to hear what he says, and then calling your brother or sister that you're close with and sharing mm -hmm. and getting free from it. <laughs> it's really simple. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we just complicate it yeah. very much so and yeah. we numb ourselves. Yeah. Yes. I think just to go off of that, I think um, practically, I think it's it's – it's going back to what you talked about of make sure in the person that you are confiding in, bringing into that they're walking with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because I think you can end up not messing up, but like causing turmoil to this whole thing when they're not walking with the Holy Spirit, they run. They, you know, well, like. They just want to agree with everything that you're going through. Yes, having right. someone that's able to call your blind spot. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing is yes. You feel conviction. You feel like, hey, maybe even in this moment, like you're listening and you're like, there's things I need to share. There's things that are in my heart. It's first things first to the Lord, like instantaneous be in communication with him. No, you don't have to sit down in your pretty little corner, set up your Bible, set up your notebook. And like, you can start talking to him right now. Like yeah. literally shut off this podcast and go listen to him. Yeah. Um, go ask him, start communing with him. But I also think like, I think as more of a challenge, because I think your practical is extremely practical and that's what I would do. Um, but I think as a challenge, like if you're someone who's struggled with vulnerability, if you've never been vulnerable in your life, I think going back to your first thing, like I would say, delete the social media, delete the apps, delete the, the stuff that's going to cause you to compare and make you feel like you have to amount to something that you just don't yeah, good, like yeah. get all the voices from Instagram, Facebook, like there's so many apps out there nowadays, get those voices, those opinions, those thoughts out of your life, cleanse your life so that you can actually begin. Like if that's a month, if that's two months, if that's a year, like you don't have to figure out the time, but like get all the junk, get all the, the other voices out of your head. Like if you're not someone who's actively walking in a vulnerable life, get it out. And I'm not saying forever, but for now so that you can hear clearly get it out and i think then taking those practicals of like okay lord community who are my people, who are my people? um 
And then from that place, like when you're, so like, let's say you're like, okay, I've done that. You know, I'm starting to, as you're inviting some of those things back into your life, if you feel like maybe they're gone forever, but as you're inviting some of those things back into your life, I'm not saying go social media free for the rest of your life. Like that's for some people, that's not practical. Um, but start, invite the Holy Spirit into those decisions. Yeah. Like, it's not just a thing where it's like, okay, I'm good. I've been vulnerable with three people. I feel better. I feel lighter. I feel free. Awesome. Now we're just going to download everything again. Cause you're almost like re bringing up the voices, the thoughts, the opinions, the things. And so I think it's just, wa it's walking with the Holy Spirit. I think practically speaking, like this should be practical in our lives. Like practically speaking, we should be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We should be walking with the Holy Spirit. Um, we should be getting the junk and the voices out of our head so that we can walk with the Holy Spirit. And, um, yeah, it's simple, but it, I think community is a necessity. I think that's why the Lord gave us community mm -hmm. is to be vulnerable, is to walk, call out our blind spots. I think in just like, yeah, all the things and wrapping it up. Like it's, it's all the things that we've talked about, put it together. It's not going to be perfect. Everyone's soup looks different, <laughs> but yeah. That's good. And I think just to wrap it up, what Gabby said earlier is be willing to look internally and ask yourself, who are you in this conversation? You know, we're four people who are different, but similar in ways. Um, ask yourself, who are you? And if you, if you do have community, <laughs> ask your friends. I think an awesome question that um, I've heard people ask is like, how do you see me? When you look at me, how do you see me? If you actually ask your friends that, there's going to be a lot of truth that comes. It might be hard truth. And it's going to be good truth. It's going to be things that you probably think of lies about yourself, but they see you in truth. And so I think asking yourself, who are you in this conversation? Let the Lord speak to that. I would say even more than asking that, if you've never walked in vulnerability and you actually want the the blind spots is asking that specifically. It's like, hey, what what do you struggle with me in? what are my blind spots? Like being a little bit more, cause I think it's easy to be like, who do you say I am? And they're like, you're awesome. You're kind. Yeah, you're true. beautiful. You walk with the Lord. Like, yeah, yes, yeah. no. Like what are my blind spots? Yeah. What am I not seeing? Yeah, that's good. A uh, question that I heard on, um, actually Jonathan Melissa Helster's podcast mm -hmm. was, I feel like the way they framed it was so beautiful. And it was, how do you experience me? I feel like that's wow. very <laughs> multifaceted. And we actually, we're able to sit, wait on the Lord, ask like, how, what's my experience of Spencer? Mm -hmm. And we were able to speak to truth. And then we were able to be like, Hey, like the good truth, the, Hey, I see this on your life. I see you moving this beautifully. And then, Hey, my experience of you sometimes is when this happens, this is your response. And I love you enough to say like, Hey, let's come out of that. Wow. Um, and so not even like, looking to other people necessarily for identity, but looking to them for what's the expression of my life? What do you, what's the fruit of my oh, life yeah. and how do you experience that? Um, cause I think someone struggling with vulnerability and identity that can get confusing to them for sure. because then those, those voices shape their identity when really it should be first and foremost and always the Lord. Yeah. And then the fruit of our life is what people experience. So just practical questions to ask and continue to ask as we're walking with each other and walking as whether that's just as friends, as family, as married and teams, leadership, whatever that looks like. What is your experience yeah. of me? Yeah, it's so good. And that, that book you guys referenced at the very beginning, Continuous Revival, mm -hmm. I think one of the coolest parts about that is understanding that like vulnerability is meant to be a continuous thing. Yeah. It was never yeah. it was never meant to be a one time thing that we do. And then we're good. Like that's a, it's daily. It's daily. And I, I've seen just such a fruit in y'all's life, in your marriage, in our life and us together as we've just been continuous about it. Um, yeah, it's just brought all of us closer and deeper. And I'm, yeah, just thankful. Just thankful. Thank you, Lord. Y'all good? Anything else? Hallelujah. <laughs> Peace out. Hey, y'all. Thanks for tuning into this week's session of the Freedom House podcast. We talked about vulnerability and brokenness. 
before the Lord and before each other as brothers and sisters. So I hope you were encouraged today. We would love for you guys to tune into next week's episode. Thanks for listening. I hope you all have an amazing day. We love you guys. Thank you.